How do you feel, Austin? Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words before we start? <laughs> I feel okay now. <laughs> Let's just take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> easy pace. Pretty good turnout, though. Bike looks pre ride. Hey everyone! Alright, we are mile 99.08. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pretty bad at recording videos, but we're still going. Austin's pulling up. We've got most of the gravel out of the way. Almost 80 miles of gravel. And we have a mile more gravel to go. It's mostly paved, mostly downhill. It's really good. <laughs> um, but it's amazing out here. All right. Mile 136. About to climb the pass. But almost there. All right, guys, welcome back to Wild Outdoor Living. So we, we finished the ride. Um, we made it all 154 miles, and it was quite the experience. Um, you guys can definitely read about that on my blog in much more detail. And basically, I didn't get as much footage as I wanted to uh, just because we were kind of on a time crunch to finish while the sun was still up. You know, we finished with plenty of time in 13 and a half hours, uh, but it was a little bit of a concern, so I didn't want to stop too much once we were actually out there. So what we're gonna do is actually go over the bike, um, go over the, the gear that worked, what didn't work, and uh, kind of what I thought about everything. So the checkpoint has always worked amazing. It always surprises me just how capable this bike is. Uh, it can really handle a lot of mixed terrain. Once on the road, it was very fast, but on the in the rocks and in the washboards, uh, it, was, it was extremely well planted. Uh, handled really well and overall I was really impressed throughout the day. The only thing that I would change on the bike itself would be the the front crank set and possibly the cassette as well. What I've got on there right now is adequate um, but with 8,800 feet of climbing uh, and a couple big passes in there definitely was at its limit in terms of in terms of gearing. I definitely could have used a lower gear for sure. Uh, it was usable but it could have been lower. So when I can get a hold of a 4630 crank set and possibly figure out how to get an 11 to 40 cassette in there, I would love to, but at least getting that crank set I think would make a big difference. Austin had that gearing on his and he, he was able to pedal noticeably faster in some of the steeper climbs than, than I was. So uh, other things that worked really well, the tires actually cleared just fine. So it looks like the back tire may have touched the frame just maybe tapped it a couple of times that spot looks slightly cleaner essentially um, but i can't really tell for sure and so certainly over 154 miles if there was going to be a clearance issue it would have been much worse and and i didn't see any any issue at all from those tires they they took a ton of the edge off on the rough stuff um, rough sections that would have been kind of intolerable on on a 45 uh, were were, were, really weren't too bad on these tires. They, they soaked up a ton of, of impact and, and they weren't really that slow on the road. I left them at 20 PSI all day and on the park road on pavement we were doing 20 to 25 miles an hour on the flats so uh, it didn't really slow me down too much. I was, I was really pleased with those. Uh, these are 700 by 51s or a 29 by 2 so these new tires that are 700 by 50 are gonna fit even a little bit better and so you know, that's definitely not recommended by Trek, so I'm not recommending that to you, but for me, um, it's a risk I'm willing to take. So, the bags from Oveja Negra worked amazing. They, the snack pack was great for carrying all my food. You can stuff a ton of, of food in there. And then the gear jammer was great because it was really cold in the morning. It warmed up a little bit and then got cold in the mountains again, and then I got cold again in the evening. It was just kind of cold all day, and there was storms um, brewing. It was actually snowing in Yellowstone at the time. And we barely missed those storms, um, 
but it had they hit us it, it could have been definitely an issue if we didn't have the right clothing with us so i was able to carry all of that in there plus some emergency supplies and really worked out well for that the bar tape the triple wrap worked awesome so the double wrap i've always loved and then i triple wrapped the tops and just having a different diameter bar to move in between really helped my hands kind of distribute pressure differently throughout the day and the silicone tape i, I feel like absorbed quite a lot of vibration so i was really pleased with that uh, my lights worked great my design computer worked pretty well didn't have any major issues except for the fact that i think there was some sort of glitch when we first started out um, it wasn't recording elevation for like the first 5,000 feet of climbing almost. So um, we did almost 9,000 feet of climbing and it recorded 3,000. So I, I th think there's an update I'm supposed to do on that, but that was the only downfall with that. The cassette sunglasses that I have, the Legends, um, you know, great, great visibility the whole day. It didn't move at all in the rough stuff. I really didn't have to think about them once. I was really, really happy to have those, really comfortable. Um, one thing I didn't like was the Bontrager Wave Cell Blaze. So the helmet itself is really comfortable, very comfortable straps. It fits great on my head. Um, but for this type of riding in this position on the gravel bike, it's too heavy for sure. The, the Spectre is meant more for road and gravel and the, the Blaze is meant more as a mountain helmet. And it honestly, it was just too heavy and it was hurting my neck and I was having a hard time turning my head. Um, as far as I wanted to by the end of the day. So I wouldn't recommend a helmet quite that heavy. I should have taken my Scott Groove, but I figured I'd try it and, and sure enough, it, it, it was too heavy for sure. In terms of everything else, uh, I did carry three bottles on here and I definitely needed all three of them. Would have been nice to have a fourth as a backup, but uh, three was adequate. Did not have to use the bear spray, but we were definitely in bear country and so it was a really good idea to have it there. Didn't have to use tubes, didn't have any mechanicals at all. Everything functioned perfectly well and we had a great day on the bike. So if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below and we'll see you next time.